Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strawn at Cast Iron Cookwire, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookwire. Today we're in my shop and we're going to be doing a little bit of an experiment. We're going to be doing a boiling lye tank and we're going to be doing that coming right up. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you again to everyone that has purchased my product, Easy Beasy Cast Iron Seasoning. The purchase of this product helps keep this channel going, and I want to say again, I appreciate you so very much. So let's get on to the video. Okay, just like I said earlier, we're going to be doing a boiling lye tank. Now, if you've seen my video, How to Set Up a Lye Tank, that's basically what we're going to do, except for we're going to kick it up a notch and we're going to raise the temperature. We're not just going to raise it up to warm water. We're going to raise it up to a boiling temperature. I do want to say when you're working with lye, if you're not very comfortable with it, make sure that you wear safety gloves, even safety goggles. Even if you are very comfortable with working with lye, uh, always keep you a little bottle of vinegar water solution. That way if you splash some on your arm or anywhere that you don't want it, you can spray yourself down with it. And... Uh, and make sure it's neutralized so you'll be okay to go ahead and go and wash with soap and water and you'll be all right. If you remember my video of my electrolysis tank setup, I had a tank that was made out of stainless steel. Now we're going to use that today for the boiling lye tank. Now you do not want to use aluminum. Aluminum is reactive to lye. It will eat away, it probably spring a leak, probably even produce some bad fumes that are flammable. So you do not want to use aluminum with lye. So just avoid aluminum altogether. So let's take a look at what we have here. Okay, there is my 35 gallon stainless steel tank. And I have a 20,000 BTU fire burner. And there's my gas bottle that is fueling my tank. Right now, it's only full of water. Now, I only have four pounds of 100% lye. And that's what you want. You want... 100% lye. You don't want something that's 99% lye and 1% of some other chemical or inert ingredient, whatever that is. So go with 100% lye. I'll leave a link in the video description below on Amazon of how you can find this. And we're going to mix one pound per five gallons. Now I have a 35 gallon tank and I only have four pounds, so I'm only going to be good for 20 gallons. So I didn't fill it all the way full. I filled it about a tad over half full, so we'll have a pretty good mixture. I'm going to use the same mixture that I usually would use in a standard lye tank. So let me pull down the camera, and we'll take a look as we mix this up. Okay, we have, and it's going to come out like salt. Now, we don't want to just... Pour it all in there at once because we don't want it clumping up. Now it will go to the bottom and set. Be careful not to get yourself splashed. That was two, three, and that's four. I'm going to use a piece of hardwood flooring to stir this up. And we can fill it on the bottom. Now be careful not to splash. We're just going to stir and kind of rake across the bottom. And I don't feel any granules on the bottom. So I think we have a pretty good mixture. Now there will be some fumes, so you probably need ventilation if you're going to do this, even if you're going to be doing a standard lye tank. Now after it gets mixed in, the ventilation is not going to be as important. I went ahead and sprayed my stir stick down really good with a a little bit of vinegar and water just because I don't want to be dripping it on anything that might cause an issue. So we're going to give this a few minutes and let it kind of dissolve 
even though we have it stirred up it's in solution but it's going to take a few minutes for it to kind of dissolve all the way and just blend in with the water like i said you're going to produce a little bit of fumes during this process uh, so you want to make sure that you have a fan blowing some ventilation of some kind just make sure that you don't just get right over it and breathe it in so just take your time and be careful oh yeah we're starting to get where we can actually see all the way down to the bottom so all we have to do now is fire this thing up okay we got a pretty good flame going right there this is a 20,000 BTU burner I'm going to monitor the temperature and when it starts getting hot we'll come back and we'll take a look at it okay we're starting to gain a little bit of temperature the pot is hot enough where I can't really leave my hand on it very long on the outside but I got a couple of few pieces here I got this old gate mark griddle that is got some old seasoning on it I've got another little griddle here that's uh, got some old seasoning on it I did put some oil on it too just to keep it from rusting when I first picked it up and it needs stripping got this little Wagner CDO griddle it needs to be stripped down so I can re-season it and this little number eight this one right here looks like an unmarked Wagner griddle as well and I got this 1891 Wagner long griddle now it wasn't made in 1891 1991 is when they come out to commemorate their 100 years of being in business we're going to put all of these in there and I've got I've got a wire this is a electrical wire that is still inside its insulation and we're going to drop these down in there I'm going to go ahead and drop these down in there really gently and I believe this one will actually lay down in the bottom and I'm going to leave my wire just hanging over the edge and this is two I'm going to leave my wires all on this side I'm going to wait till I see the water starting to boil and I'm going to give them about 30 minutes and just see if 30 minutes in boiling lye will strip them down we'll pull some of them out and take a look at them okay we haven't got to a boil yet but we do have smoking and if you see the handle is already coming clean on this one this one here it's almost coming clean so I can say at this point we're probably gonna make it looks like this is gonna work so we're gonna give it 30 minutes from right now we're gonna come back and take another look at it pull out some pieces and just see how they're doing so let's give it one more close-up look before we stop filming for a minute and then we'll come back in about 30 minutes and check them out we got a really good simmer going and I think that's all we're going to get at this point so see you in about 30 minutes okay we've given it 30 minutes and it never did come to a boil so let's take a closer look at it so we're going to go ahead and pull out our first piece keep our wires from getting tangled And it's pretty clean it's got some loose on it I'm going to uh, put this over here and let it cool and a little raised aid on the bottom is pretty much clean same with this one Let's see what our little long griddle looks like turn it the other way it is a little on the heavy side we're gonna let these rest for about 30 minutes and come back after they're cool and take a closer look at them spray them down with some vinegar and 
neutralize the lye, and just see if all the rest of the seasoning will just roll right off of it. Okay, we've let them cool down just a little bit, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at a couple of them. I'm telling you what, that never come out. This one here doesn't have any seasoning left on it. Now it's got some pitting and some issues. But it cleaned this one here down to bare metal. Now this one here has a little more crud on it. This all just gonna come right off. We'll take this and hit it with a scrubby and see if it won't just finish it right off. Yeah, that's all coming loose right there. Oh yeah. That'll scrub right off right there. Let's take a look at this right here. Now this one right here, in a rusty shape. All the seasoning is gone, but it will have to have a rust removal done to it. We're gonna take these and rinse them off a little bit. We're gonna bring them back and then take a closer look. So give me just a couple of minutes to get these rinsed and I'll be right back. This one's kind of pitted really bad, but it took all the old seasoning off of it. And this one here, there is still some leftover seasoning around the edge. And a little bit inside the, the pitting, close to the gate mark area. Now this in here, it came clean, but it was had a lot of rust underneath it. This in here will be a candidate for a rust removal project. I may go ahead and throw them two pieces in there that had a little bit left over and just let them sit overnight. I'm sure that will completely knock out any residue that's left in there. Let's go ahead and make this thing secure for the night. I just want to cut in right quick and kind of recap the things that I have learned about using this method and we're just going to go down the list. Number one, when mixing lye, always start with your water first, then add your lye into the water. Number two, make sure that you have proper PPE, especially if you're not comfortable handling lye. Rubber gloves, safety glasses, and never forget when you're working with lye, keep a spray bottle of 50-50 vinegar water solution it can really come in handy. Number three, always make sure that you got plenty of ventilation. You don't want to be inhaling any of that gas. Even if it's not that concentrated, it's not good for your lungs. Number four, and this is unique to the boiling lye bath. I never did get the water up to a boil, but I did get it up to a really good simmer. And when I did, there was a lot of vapor coming off of the water and it really filled the room up with a real smoky smell, almost like I was in a forest fire. I've already ran another batch through there just like I did before, but I piled it full. What I did, I raised the temperature till I started seeing a little vapor come off the top of the water, then I cut it off. One overnight cycle like that will clean just about anything. Number five, when using the vinegar and water spray to neutralize the lye, don't let your pan set very long. As soon as you neutralize the lye by spraying the vinegar water on it, go ahead and rinse them off and wash them with soap and water. Because if you don't, the vinegar water solution will etch your pans. And I will say this method works great. I will be using it a lot more in the future. 
to the point where I believe I'm going to go ahead and invest in a 40 gallon stainless steel tank where I can set it up permanently so I will have an electrolysis station and a hot lye station. So let's go ahead and get back to the ending of the video. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video and you got something out of it. And if you have, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I promise I'll keep more of them coming. You can also follow Cast Iron Cookware on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check out our Facebook group page. It is a great group full of people who love cast iron, love sharing and connecting. You can sign up to receive emails from Cast Iron Cookware as well. I will leave a link to all these sites below in the video description, so check it out. I believe there'll be something in there that you'd be interested in. And I just want to say thank you again for watching Cast Iron Cookware. Before you go, I just want to share something with you really quickly. In Romans chapter 8, verse 16 through 18, it says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I just want to say share the word and be a blessing.